I'm going to cover some of the fundamental information related to traffic volume and vehicle types, talk about some of the, the basic equations that you should know when dealing with traffic engineering and, and traffic volumes. We'll start with looking at some of the design vehicle dimensions, and these are broken up by design vehicle type, ranging from passenger and single unit trucks, the SU stands for single unit, and we have both the height, width, and length of these vehicles. We also have buses and their associated dimensions, combination trucks, and the WB stands for wheelbase, and that's the distance of the wheelbase, and we'll see an, an image coming up to see what that actually looks like in terms of a vehicle, and again, height, width, and length. And then recreational vehicles, or RVs, and their associated dimensions. So here's our WB40, it's a wheelbase 40, the overall dimension is 13 and a half feet tall, 45 and a half feet long, and these are from the 2011 Ashto Green Book, actually the most recent 2018 version doesn't have these vehicle dimensions, a lot of these are, are built into uh, design software when you're looking at turning movements and turning radii, and will, will the design vehicle actually fit in the roadway you've designed. So a lot of software packages have these now, but these are the dimensions that are provided in that uh, 2011 green book. The terminology is important when we're talking about and thinking about traffic volumes. AADT is the annual average daily traffic. So that's looking over a 12 month period, 365 days, 24 hours a day. If you have a smaller time period, you'll be looking at the average daily traffic, that's the ADT, and you can also make adjustments to the ADT to turn that into an equivalent annual average, but if you have another time period and you're just looking at a week of traffic or a month or a weekend, you're looking at possibly just average daily traffic. We also have the design hourly volume, the DHV, and that's for both directions. You can look at it just in one direction. And we'll see just the DDHV, the directional design hour volume. So that's in, in one direction, and, and typically we're looking at the peak direction for that hourly volume. We also have the design service flow rate, the DSFR, and that's the peak 15 minutes in one direction. So when we're looking at operational analysis, that's typically what we're going to examine is that peak 15 minutes in one direction. We're going to adjust these various values with some common factors. K is one of those. That's the percentage of the traffic during the peak hour. So out of the whole day, what percent is during that peak hour? And this is a value that's typically between 8 and 12 percent. Uh, could be a little bit lower, a little bit higher, depending on a, a particular location. But common assumptions are somewhere in the, the 8 to 12 percent range. And again, that just represents the percentage of daily traffic that occurs during the peak hour. B is the directional factor. This is the proportion of traffic traveling in the predominant direction. Typically, it's between 0.5 and 0.7. Most commonly, it's somewhere in the 0.55 to 0.65 range. But again, depending on a particular location, it can differ from those. The peak hour factor, the PHF, is the ratio of the design hour volume to the peak 15 minute flow rate. And this is typically close to one, uh, somewhere 0 0.8 or 0.85 to 0.95. And this just ex helps explain the variability within that peak hour of those 15 minute bends of traffic. Our AADT, the annual Average daily traffic is just the sum of the traffic volume in one year divided by the number of days in that year. And that accounts for seasonal, recreational, special events, any fluctuation throughout that year. The AADT is going to capture that in the traffic volume counts. The ADT is a very similar equation to the previous one. But to calculate the ADT, this is just our traffic volume over the number of days in the time period. And again, that's typically uh, less than a year, a much shorter time period than our AADT. We 
can adjust our ADT considering a growth rate. So the ADT adjusted is equal to the ADT times 1 plus the growth rate raised to the number of years. This equation is to adjust an ADT or an ADT based on an annual growth rate. So if you're looking at some time in the future and you know your general background growth rate, this equation can help you make that adjustment from current times to a future time period. 3% is a common assumed growth rate. Um, if you're working an exam problem, it, it likely would be given in the problem or some information would be given to you to help you assume a reasonable growth rate for that example. And the number of years can be positive if we're looking into the future, and that's kind of how I explained it, or it should be negative if you're estimating historic traffic volume. So if you're trying to take a current volume and say it was less in the past, we know a general growth rate, then you have, would apply that as a negative number of years. Our design hourly volume is equal to the AADT times the K factor, that's our hourly factor. So that was again typically 8 to 12 percent. So we're multiplying our average, annual average daily traffic, or it could be our ADT, by that 8 to 12 percent, or wherever your K factor may be, to get your design hourly volume. Similarly, for the directional design hourly volume, we're going to multiply. Our previous equation, we're going to add in that D factor, multiplying by our D factor, which again is typically somewhere between 0.5 and 0.7. So we have our ADT or our AADT multiplied by K, multiplied by D, and that's going to give you your directional design hourly volume. And we can also calculate our design service flow rate, and that's again the amount of traffic in that peak 15 minute time period in one direction. That's our Directional design hourly volume divided by our peak hour factor. We're really focusing on that 15 minute time period within the peak hour, and this equation is going to help us calculate that value. And our peak hour factor, if it's not given to you, but you have information and you're asked to find it yourself, is the total peak hour volume. And on, on the numerator and the denominator is four times that highest 15 minute volume. And that's why you're going to get a value less than one, unless if all four of your 15 minute time periods are equal, then you will get a value of one in real life. You're never going to see that happen. There's going to be variation between those 15 minute periods. And so you're going to see some value less than one for the peak hour factor. So we'll walk through some examples here and, and see how these equations are actually put into practice. So we are told that we have a 15 minute volume for the peak hour of a roadway, and we're asked to find the peak hour factor. So between four, sorry, between for the four time periods between eight and nine and 15 minute increments, we're told the number of vehicles are 450, 400, 550, and 500. Our equation again is the total hourly volume divided by four times the highest 15 minute volume. So our peak hour factor is 450 plus 400 plus 550 plus 500 vehicles, all divided by 4 times the highest 15 minute volume, which was 550 vehicles. So we're going to get a peak hour factor of 0.86, and that was answer B. We're told we have one week of traffic volume data that are given here. We're asked to find the ADT for this roadway. So we have the seven days of traffic volumes and the number of vehicles on each of those days. For our ADT, we want to take the sum of the traffic volume divided by the number of days in the time period. We're going to add up each of those volumes, dividing it by the seven days in the time period. So over that time period, we saw 65,390 vehicles. It was a seven-day period, so our ADT was 9,340 vehicles per day, and that is answer B. We have an ADT for a road that's 9,340 vehicles per day. We're told that we can expect the traffic to grow at 3% annually. We're asked for the expected ADT in 10 years. 
So we're looking to adjust that ADT, and that's equal to the original ADT times 1 plus the growth rate raised to the number of years. So our adjusted ADT is 9340 multiplied by 1 plus 3% raised to the 10. So we have 9340 times 1.03 to the power of 10. That simplifies to 9340 times 1.344, which gives us 12,553 vehicles per day. That's looking at starting with 9,340 vehicles, 3% growth per year over a 10-year time period, and that is answer C. We're told that we have an average traffic volume of 9,340 vehicles per day on a section of highway. We're told that our K factor on similar roads is 11%, so that's an assumption for this problem, and we're asked for the DHV for this road and vehicles per hour. So our DHV is the ADT times K. So we have 9340 vehicles per day times 11%. Again, that 11% is telling us that's the proportion of the daily traffic that comes during that peak hour. So doing that multiplication, we come up with a design hourly volume of 1,027 vehicles during the peak hour, and that is answer C. The peak hour traffic volume on a section of highway is 1,027 vehicles per hour. Based on data from similar location, we're told that the D factor is 62%. That means that the peak direction has 62% of the traffic. And we're asked to find the DDHV, the Directional Design Hourly Volume, in vehicles per hour. So the DDHV is the DHV times our directional factor D. So the DDHV is 1,027 vehicles per hour multiplied by 62%. So our DDHV, our Directional Design Hourly Volume, is 637 vehicles in the peak hour in that peak direction, and that is answer A. We're told that the average traffic volume on a section of highway is 9,340 vehicles per day. We're told that the K factor is 11%, the D factor is 62%, and the peak hour factor is 0.91. We're asked to find the design service flow rate for this road in vehicles per hour. So we know that the DHV is equal to the ADT times K. So the DHV is 9,340 vehicles per day times 11%. This gives us a DHV of 1,027 vehicles during the peak hour. The DDHV, the Directional Design Hourly Volume, is the DHV times D. So we have our 1,027 vehicles in the peak hour multiplied by 62% is our directional factor. This gives us a DDHV of 637 vehicles in the peak hour in the peak direction. And now to find our design service flow rate is our DDHV divided by our peak hour factor. So that's 637 vehicles in the peak hour divided by 0.91 gives us a design service flow rate of 700 vehicles in the peak hour, which is answer B. And so this is what we'd be designing for in our actual traffic analysis is this design service flow rate.